You know, it never ceases to amaze me how creative these fraudsters could get when it comes to exploiting major companies' weaknesses and getting their hands on fast money. So when I initially read this case, I knew I had to talk with y'all about it. In this video, we're going to take a look into a man who finessed Amazon's book rental program for over four years and was able to illegally obtain over $1.5 million. Yo, my sixth grade teacher used to tell me the money's in the books. And this gentleman right here, he definitely took that saying to an entirely next level. Today, we're going to be taking a look into Jeffrey Talsma of Michigan and see how this man was able to pull off this sophisticated scheme because trust me, y'all, there was levels to how he was able to pull this off. So as always, if you're entertained, informed, or find any value in the video, remember to hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel to catch more of my content on financial fraud and how to stay one step ahead of these fraudsters. All right, let's get right into the information. Thursday, October 14, 2021. Jeffrey Tausma was arrested on a felony indictment in Grand Rapids, Michigan, charging him with mail and wire fraud, interstate transportation of stolen property, aggravated identity theft, and making false statements to the FBI. From January 16 to March 2021, Tausma figured out how to defraud Amazon book rental program on multiple levels, and he exploited it till he couldn't exploit it no more. In case you aren't familiar, Textbooks are mad expensive. I'm talking hundreds of dollars for a book that you'll barely use for a couple of months and never touch again. So Amazon's book rental program is beneficial in the sense that it allows students to rent these books for a semester at a fraction of the cost. Of course, many students take multiple classes, so a single account can have multiple books rented out at one time. But at the time of this scheme, Amazon set a 15 book rental limit per an account, which seems pretty reasonable if you ask me. The charges for these rentals will be placed on the debit or credit cards associated with the Amazon account, and if the books aren't returned to Amazon by the agreed return date, then Amazon will charge the account for the full price of the book. In order to defraud the program, Talisman will manipulate or fabricate multiple points of information associated with the Amazon account creation process in order to create multiple accounts with the goal of renting tons of textbooks. And please, don't get it twisted, y'all. Talsma was not studying hard trying to get his PhD or his doctorate degree. No siree Bob. He would actually rent all these books with no intentions of returning them. He would resell the books many times right back to Amazon, directly to unknown individuals or to local bookstores throughout Michigan, Kentucky, Oregon, and many other states. According to the indictment, Talsma created tons of Amazon accounts using slightly different identifiers and variations of his name such as Greg Talsma, Jeff Talma, Jeff Talima. He would even use names of other individuals and he would also use slightly different email addresses and telephone numbers. For delivery addresses, Talsma would pay people to allow him to use their address to receive the books or he would lie to people about the true intentions behind his orders and ask them to use their address for assistance in his book distribution business. Finally, Talsma would also recruit other individuals to use their identities in order to run the scheme through, but more on that in a bit. Talsma would link these Amazon accounts to prepaid vanilla Visa gift cards that had just enough money on them to cover the initial rental fee. When the due date for the books came up and Amazon attempted to charge these accounts, of course the charges would bounce, and also of course the gift cards did not have any account holders names on it. So Amazon would be left taking the L since they had no way of tracking it back to Talsma. Talsma would also call Amazon customer service multiple times throughout the scheme, posing as these made up individuals claiming he did not receive his orders or he received items completely different from his textbook orders. Talsma would falsely claim to Amazon customer service reps that he received items such as Bic lighters, alcohol wipes, silicone based items or tiki torch fluid for example because he knew these items were flammable and Amazon would not ask him to return it. The indictment calls out one of these conversations in which Talsma goes as far as telling the Amazon rep he received fuel oil that he disposed of and it caused the fire to break out in his trash. Homeboy was just straight up lying his ass off. And each time he did this, Amazon would either send him another book, allowing him to double up on one order, or they would give him a refund in the form of an Amazon gift card or just return the cash right back to his account. Regardless of the method of refund, he would reinvest the money into renting more books to continue running the scheme and filling his pockets. 
Now, as mentioned earlier, Talisman also recruited several individuals who he used as mules in order for him to run this scheme through. The indictment calls out three of these individuals specifically, Love Deep Sink, The Noah, Greg Mark Gleasing, and Paul Steven Larson. All three of these gentlemen started off as mules, but eventually they became students of Talisman's Amazon textbook rental scheme, and he would teach them the method in which he pulled off the fraud and supervised the overall operation. These gentlemen was able to run this scheme for several years and made over $1.5 million. It seemed like there would be no end in sight to the illegal money that they was bringing in, but as with many fraudsters, bits and pieces of their operation would slowly begin to unravel and eventually collapse. The case paperwork isn't really clear exactly when the operation began to get investigated, but I can only assume Amazon started to spot a pattern in the names, emails, and addresses that these claims were being reported on, so it sparked an investigation with the FBI. And once the case was in the hands of the FBI, they was able to pick it apart like it was nothing. The case paperwork calls out one of these bogus orders that Talisman submitted using a variation of his then girlfriend's name. From this single order, the FBI was able to uncover several important details that tied the accounts back to Talisman. First, they identified the IP address associated with the cell phone used to create the account belonged to a Verizon customer who was, you guessed it, Jeffrey Talisman. Second, when Talisman placed an order to rent the textbooks from this account, they were able to tie the IP address used for the order right back to Talisman's home in Michigan. Finally, related to the same order, Talisman would eventually call Amazon to make a false claim stating he never received the order, but instead he received flammable items that he couldn't return. Based on this, Amazon provided him a credit that he used to purchase additional books. The FBI was once again able to track this call right back to your boy, Talisman. Based on how easy it was for them to be able to tie that single order back to Talsma, I can only imagine the same was done for many of the other orders he or his textbook stealing gang placed. The case paperwork also calls out that Talsma and his crew was eventually questioned by the FBI. During this meeting, Talsma would lie repeatedly to the FBI about his actions, specifically falsely stating that he never made orders under other people's names outside of his own, and also lying about not using other individuals mailing addresses to receive shipments of books. The other members of the textbook gang on the other hand, Gleasing, Danoa, and Larson were also questioned and based on my review of the paperwork, they all stated that they did the crime because they were struggling to make ends meet and they will all fully cooperate with the authorities, including giving up any necessary information related to the scheme. The three side members of the textbook gang will all plead guilty on January 26, 2022 and fess up to their actions, including the fact that Talsma was the mastermind behind the situation and he showed them the way. And now with all this working against him, Talsma would not take the case to trial and he will also eventually plead guilty a month later on February 25th, 2022 to mail fraud and aggravated identity theft. Talisman will be sentenced on June 28, 2022 and faces a maximum term of 20 years for mail fraud and a maximum term of two years for aggravated identity theft. Potentially plenty of time to sit back and catch up on some reading. He will also have to pay restitution that will be announced during his sentencing in June, so it's only a matter of time before we find out how long these gentlemen will have to sit in prison for. So people, if you take anything from this case, please make sure you aren't overly trusting of people when it comes to using your name or address to do things. Always ask questions to understand exactly what the reasoning is because anyone who is doing good business should be able to do things in their own name. Anyone asking to do things in your name or address should always be seen as a red flag. Don't get blinded by the money because money comes and goes, but the time spent behind bars away from your family and loved ones cannot be replaced. Word. But with that being said, that's the video for today. Hope you found some value in it. Don't forget to hit that like button and also leave a comment to let me know what you thought about the textbook gang and how they did their thing. Oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to catch more of my quality content on financial fraud and how to stay one step ahead of it as well. Aight, peace.